Hey guys, how's it going? Well, after a, a night of no sleep and trying to think of what I wanted to do with this thing and, you know, all the stuff that goes through your head, you, when you got something that's up in the air, you don't sleep very well, so. By 4 a.m. I finally fell asleep, but then uh, at 7.50 I was woken back up by the phone, so that was that night. But, uh, last night I started looking on Craigslist trying to get an idea of what we want to do. Do we want to get something that's an economy car, but do we want to get a Subaru, it's still full of drive. We have a camp in the woods that's kind of rough to get into, so you need something that has the capacity to get in there without bottoming out. and. All those kind of issues and you talk about what you get for gas and do you want something you can tow or do we want to get two vehicles do we want to get a uh, like a trucky kind of thing for doing that work and then a little commuter car for buzzing around and having to spare so in the middle of that i probably contacted about 20 different uh people on craigslist just just wrote to them you know or left voicemails of course not really any of them called back uh, except for one that had the phone number on there, and it was a, um, a 2003 Forerunner, and he's telling me about the car, and he's got it on there for six grand, and the uh, he tells me all about it, and then he says, yeah, but I got somebody coming in the morning that's going to give me five grand, five grand cash, and uh, I go, is that all set in stone? Does he have your address and everything already? He's like, yeah, he does. So I kind of. Playing faux tag, I, I offered him 5200 and tried to step up a little bit because he had it on him for six and the guy was coming with cash for five. And uh, he was he wrote the guy back, made sure he, everything was a definite. He said, Yeah, it's definite. I want to go come get it. He was coming from Maine. And uh, when he uh, this morning I was doing a bunch of work, I got that plow finished up and some other stuff. Real busy morning. And uh, my wife gave me a, a shout saying that uh, that guy called and but didn't leave a message on the house phone. He, he never called me on the cell. Um, so I just went and called him back for shits and giggles, and he said that guy that was supposed to come could not get the money out of the bank today. He couldn't get all five grand out at one time. So he uh, gave, was, you know, just went and gave me a call. So I'm like, well, I'm going to the bank. I'll give you a call when I leave my house. <laughs> so I, I grabbed the wife, grabbed the plates off of this forerunner, and. Uh, and I grabbed 5200 bucks and went down to go look at it. And as you can see, I do now own it. Um, it's a 2003. It is an SR5. The other one, that one's a limited. So it has a little bit more bells and whistles. It's got leather interior and some you know, funky electronics and that kind of thing. Uh, this is the SR5, which I don't even think they make anything under the SR5. I think there's like three trim levels. But having said that they're very um well equipped you know it's more of kind of like a luxury sport utility not a uh, not a trucky sport utility and uh, so this is what we got and uh it's quite nice actually and it's uh, it's yeah it's used it's beat up a little bit here and there the headliner's got some boo-boos on it and bumps and scrapes and stains you know it was a guy that had it um, it was actually a guy's father that had it, and um, I, however way that he ended up with it, the son had it. The son was probably had about 30, 35, something like that. And uh, he was looking at, he had it in for a trade or sale. He was trying to get a Jeep of some sort. And uh, so to make a long story short, um, I beat the guy to the punch. I was able to get to the bank, and uh, I just had the five grand, and I was able to cover it. So... Uh, off we went, and uh, 5200 rather, and uh, let me go look at it, and somewhere I have the keys on me. And there's a couple things I liked about this more than uh, an earlier version. This is, um, 2003 is the beginning of what's called the, uh, the uh, fourth generation uh, forerunners. Have you noticed the miles that are on it? That's nice. It's got 133,000 on it, and the other one's got 255, I believe. So, you know, it's a difference of uh, what is that? 125,000, 130,000, 20,000, whatever. <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, it's got a lot less miles on it, and uh, it is still four-wheel drive. That you did want to go have into the cabin. It is a five-speed automatic, not a four-speed automatic. 
and uh, I got a couple other things too. Uh, it's full time four wheel drive I believe and then but you still do have a high and a low range and then it's got diff locks over here you can actually lock them together and uh, run that. And it's also got one other thing I'm not quite sure what it is I gotta go look in the owner's menu at DAC which I think that's um it's kind of like engine braking or automatic braking when you're going down a hill, steep hill. It'll kind of break each wheel when it knows it's starting to slip or back off. I'm not quite sure. I'll look it up. Looks like we got it uh, about 20 cents for free too. I uh, rode nice going home. She was happy with it. Uh, it's got new tires on the back. It could use two tires on the front, but they are 16s. So we can go and put uh, the ones from her other truck on it. And the one thing that I liked the most was the mileage that her old 4Runner got was like 1518. And if you look at this, this one is 1519, but it's the 4.7, it's the V8. So it's got the big motor in it, um, the same as what's in my Tundra. I they tune them a little bit differently. But uh, so the fact that we can tow with this or tow our trailer uh, definitely uh, makes for me to be a happy camper that we're not just stuck with our truck so if you have our big old dog uh, dogs that are uh, getting pretty arthritic it's kind of hard for me to stay in the back of my truck during long rides so this will uh, uh, basically make up the difference for that and it's got some other kind of options here it's got the moonroof fog lamps black running boards black roof rack a double cargo net set up in the rear daytime running lights preferred accessory package which is some carpets and crap like that and I think the total price of this was 33,286 back in 2003. So. In 2004, they went through the transmission that didn't have, uh, it's a sealed transmission. So it's for the lifetime of the vehicle. You never change the fluids in it. And I don't know if I'm all that crazy about that until I see how they hold up for 200,000 miles, you know, where this one is still the regular setup. You got a dipstick in it and a pan with a drain plug and you can change all the fluids and everything in it, so. Seems to run nice. Uh, a couple of little things that I, I noticed on it. One is it only has one key, um, but it's got the gray key, and I think the gray one is the key that you're able to make copies of. It's got the chip that's inside it, and uh, that's like the master. You could train other keys, um, but you need the gray key to go do that. So it did only have the one key, and it does not have a remote to get in and out. I don't know if I can get a remote to go program it, if anybody has any knowledge of that. Um, if you don't have an old remote to teach the other remote, is there a, a way to go do that? Inexpensively. I'm sure there's an expensive way to do it at Toyota. And again, it's got the uh, that 4.7 liter in it. And all the aluminum looks like the aluminum on my truck. It gets that pitted look to it. But I crawled all up underneath it. Everything looks nice and sound. Uh, body's got some dings and stuff on it, but nothing bad at all. That's all plastic on the side. It's not even paint, so. Um, the guy didn't really clean it up at all. I just took some leaves and stuff out of it, but that's okay. I'd rather uh, not pay for someone to do the detailing and uh, for us to do, <laughs> for us to do it on our own. Plus it is a, a dog hauling vehicle so you don't have to feel guilty about getting it dirty or putting a scratch or something in it you know I think it's a good looking truck I'd say it's probably 10% bigger than the generation before it seems like each generation gets a little bit larger you know that one there is uh, uh, going towards the end of the last third generation I think it stopped in 2001 2002 where this one when I flip the gate up I have more clearance above my head. I'm not hitting my head on the top of the gate, and it seems like it's wider in between two, just all the, all the way around. It seems like it's oh, about 10% bigger, like I said. It does have a tow package set up on it. It's got the hitch, it's got the, the seven pin connector on it. So I don't know what it has for a brake controller. I didn't see anything on it, so it probably does still need a brake controller put in it. Uh, the only other thing that's not happening is the AC. When you put in the frosty AC compressor is not turning on. Um, there is a charge. You put your finger on the low side, you do get a little bit coming back, but it might be just so low that it's not kicking on. He swears that it worked last summer, and uh, I can kind of believe that. Yeah, they must, uh, 
he, he seen everything I asked him. He seemed honest with anything I caught him with. Um, he was he was straightforward with. It does have two new tires on the on the back. They look pretty decent. They're you know, the Bridgestone Blizzax. And the front, I believe it's probably the same tire. Yeah, it's the same tire. But yeah, they're they're getting low. There's not much tread left on them at all. So we'll need two front tires. And when I looked it over, the only other thing I did see was on the two front CV joint axles. The boots were ripped on the inners on both sides. But if uh, this one holds up as good as the other ones that we've had, we've owned, an, as far as four runners, we had an 87, a 90, a 97, a 2000, and now a 2003. So, um, and each time we spend around four or five grand. Uh, the last one was four grand, I believe we paid for the, um, the maroon one, the, the 97 that blew up. So, uh, I also noticed, I already closed the hood, but the radiator's designed differently. The tranny cooler is on the side of the radiator, and I think it has its, its own little loop on the inside of it, instead of being flush with the bottom of it. The two hoses come in now on the side, so I wonder if they changed that up because they may have had a problem. Open or I think we're open. So it's got some room to it. Cup holders here and there. I think you can get each year as they get older they get more cup holders. No accidents, it's all the original paint. Kind of funny that a lot of the Toyotas they have a mechanical latch here that fails over time underneath. Looks like they switched that over to some kind of touch pad. You just you push a little electric button and it probably releases a servo instead of um, um, the mechanical one that would bind over time. Now it's got a bunch of these different, uh, this is a cargo mat for the bottom, but it's got like a shelf built down here and then it has another one kind of covers up the top up there so when you see it, close the hatch you don't see anything. One thing I thought was kind of cool too, when you look from the rear view mirror, there's a mirror here and a mirror on the other side, it allows you to look down through the glass you could see down through the glass so you could see if there's anything down in this area or that area by looking in those mirrors so little Johnny's running around sure you don't drive over them without having the um, you know reverse camera it's probably the next best thing to it uh, other thing that we kind of like about it it has a about a 400 mile range on a tank full where her other one uh, was pretty small the tank wasn't very big in the other forerunner and again, the mileage, it gets better, the same or better mileage than the six cylinder does. Plus it could still tow, which is nice because uh, at some point with our big dog and his arthritic body, it's kind of hard to shove him in the back of my truck, but uh, we should be able to pull that camper no problem. It's probably, that camper's probably about 3,500 pounds. And I think stock, the tow capacity on this is between five and 7,000 pounds. So it shouldn't be an issue and we can kind of travel in a little bit more comfort than the other one. So, I just want to give you guys a, a heads up, show you that we, we did get something to um, replace the other one and maybe I'll sleep good tonight. It's already registered, it's already insured. I just have to get an inspection sticker on it. I'll do that in a couple of days. I just want to run it around a little bit and uh, I don't suspect too much of an issue with it. I haven't gone through all the lights and all that kind of stuff, but. Um, Generally, if, that, if one of those are a problem, that's not that big of a deal. Just chasing bolts. All the brakes seem good. E-brake seems good. You know. And again, it doesn't have that many miles on it. It's only got 133. So. All right, guys. I am going to go uh, shut you down and uh, upload this and uh, go from there. Again, thanks for watching, comment, subscribing. Take care.